All right, people, Jeff Bezos is trying to take over my channel. Just as always, Bezos is trying to push out the little guy and kind of like take over the world. And, you know, since he basically has played the game with infinite money on, he can do whatever he wants. And and I, I'm pissed off about it because I want to share with you guys the content, and I use that term loosely, that is uh, trying to take over my niche here on the YouTube. So I'm your college counselor. I sit here, I visit universities, I talk to real people, and I give you a real honest take about what I see. I give you real advice based on real experiences. Nobody pays me. And then it comes to my attention that there is a similar channel doing a similar thing. It's called The College Tour. Crazy, right? And these guys are not only on YouTube, they're on Amazon Prime. And so that's where my journey started. I started figuring out what is this show really? And crazy enough, one of the universities that I visited last year actually was featured on the college tour this year. And that's how I heard about it. When I was reaching out to Danilo from Siena Heights University, I was like, hey man, how you doing? You wanna to come to our next SCORE virtual fair? And he was like, yeah, of course. Like, By the way, we were featured on this show. Check it out, it's kind of like what you do. I was like, it is kind of like what I do, huh? This channel is The College Tour. It's got 1.1K subscribers. Very interesting because a couple of months ago, it was sitting at like 400 something and has very few views, even on its like newer videos. So I don't think the channel's legitimately blowing up. Jeff is probably just sending an army of bots in to boost the channel and kind of like make it seem more legit. Uh, you know, your boy now has uh, also over a thousand and that's why I'm doing this video today because you are a real group of real people, not a bunch of bots. And I am forever grateful for your support of this channel. This time last year, I published a video talking about our goals for 2022 and you guys helped us meet those goals. I wanted to see over a thousand subs this year. You did it. This one's for you. I just you know want to spend some time with you today because you're a real community. Unlike whatever this is. Now, you might you might want to pay attention to something over here, okay? Notice when they join, all right? They join in early 2021. Very interesting. And over here, uh, late 2020, you know, right on my heels. Now, you might say, well, Meacham, isn't that just a coincidence? How do you know Jeff Bezos stole your idea? Well, keep in mind, I, I've been wanting to do a YouTube channel for a while. And SCORE had been a thing for a while before I started this channel. So I was actually producing videos well before I launched the channel, I actually had several that were like in production for a few months and I had bought all of my gear. Where else? On Amazon. So you know Jeff knows what I'm doing. I wanna watch a real episode with you guys today. I wanna to actually watch an episode, start to finish, about, you know, like one of these colleges, do a little reaction video, see what it's like. This channel is a lot dirtier than it seems. And I'm gonna show you, I figured out what Jeff Bezos' grand master plan is for the college tour, and I know what's gonna happen, and I'm gonna tell you about it when we're done watching the video. So let's go ahead and check out one of their videos. Now, I'm just gonna pull one of the most recent ones. Notice how many views, by the way. Uh, they dump a whole bunch of small videos at the same time as the full video, right? Like they do the full episode, and then they break it down to a few different videos, as you can see here. So we got like research at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, college tour, seven views. Uh, so this sudden boost in subscribers that they got just doesn't make any sense when you look at like what's actually, I mean like, I know not all of my videos are popular, okay? I know not all of my videos get a ton of views, but my content is consistently outperforming Jeff Bezos content. So again, I love you guys, you're the best, and this one's for you. I and. University of Alaska has actually been on my short list. Like I would love to have an excuse to go to Alaska. So I figured I might as well see what these guys have done before I go there, you know, make sure my stuff stays different, right? So we're gonna blow this up. Let's, uh, let's get it going. Welcome everyone to the University of Alaska Fairbanks, also known as UAF. This land, sea, and space grant university is home to more than 8,500 students from all over the world, each in pursuit of something extraordinary. In addition to the Troth Yetta campus. All right, all right, hang on real quick, real quick. I just want to stop and say, all right, so we got this guy. I, I don't know who this dude is. Uh, I think I said Alex something. All right, so this guy is our presenter, I guess. Uh, pretty cool stock footage intro shots, I guess. We're getting a little uh, geographic location, seems okay in Fairbanks, where I am today, 
UAF has six branch campuses across the state and acknowledges the Alaska Native nations upon whose ancestral lands. Okay, so right there, right there. Um, you know, that's really nice. And I know that's like kind of the woke thing to say and do these days. Uh, and like most Canadian and Australian places, for example, will point that out. That is the kind of thing you would never say in a video about a university unless they also have creative input. Like they must have some input and they're like, look, there's certain things that we got to address. Cause like, don't get me wrong. It's no disrespect to the native communities or anything, but like if I went there and I wanted to make a video about it, I probably wouldn't sprinkle that like little, Hey, by the way, we know we stole your land, but we're still using it. Thank you message. I always find those a little bit hy hypocritical myself, but okay. Those campuses reside. In Fairbanks, the Trothyeta campus is located on the ancestral lands of the Dena people of the lower Tanana River. I'm your host, Alex Boylan, and over the next half right, hour, Alex. we're going to travel around the Trothyeta campus to meet real students going to UAF right now, along with some incredible alumni. We'll hear stories from student athletes, former military service member, and even a future firefighter. It may feel like you've journeyed far, but in fact, this is where it all begins. Welcome to the University of Alaska Fairbanks. This is the College Tour. Few places in the world are as beautiful and majestic as Alaska. And Fairbanks, in the heart of the state, is no exception. The Chena River flows right through this town with ties to the gold rush. Campus sits overlooking the Tanana Valley, right on the edge of the wilderness. But that's only one reason to love Fairbanks. Let's meet Nolan, a performing arts major who's from. All right, so we get a little little touch on Fairbanks. Um, I, again, I feel like you could be in the town. You could be showing me like some real stuff here. Um, not just, I don't know, like a bunch of, I mean, drone footage is great. No, I'm, I'm one to use that as well. But like, ah, it's Fairbanks, Alaska, dude. Like, who are you making this for? I mean, my first thing I need to acknowledge if I'm going to film in Fairbanks, Alaska is like, dude, it's freaking cold and it's freaking Alaska. Like, you know, we need to acknowledge that giant freezing elephant in the room. All right. He doesn't really, it's clearly we're just getting a positive perspective here. Like, Hey, look how nice it is at Fairbanks, Alaska. Like, um, all right, we got Nolan Ernest, our first student. Now I, these are real students. They, this is true. I know this from talking to Danilo uh, I actually met the student that was featured in that episode uh, when I was doing the virtual fair. He was he came in to help present with Danilo. So I know that they do connect with real students. Um, and I know that the guy that like Danilo put forward for the video was someone in the international office that was like a representative working in admissions. So I know that they're bringing in like real students for these things. I'm kind of curious how it's put together and like produced with them. But uh, yeah, this guy looks like a good example of a student for, you know, the University of Alaska. Fairbanks, Alaska. So he's the perfect person to tell us more about this incredible location. Nolan, please take it away. Hello, hello. From a young age, I was always running wild with my love for cross country running and skiing. Here at UAF, it's no different. I'm still that kid running wild, trying new things, only now I'm able to run for UAF. One of the most important parts of UAF for me is the people. Everyone carries a unique story. All right, so this, uh, now granted, the guy is a film major. Maybe he's really good at like delivering and whatnot, but this feels just a little bit scripted here like this feels kind of like the university put some of these words in his mouth i'm not sure about that i don't want to make hard accusations here but this doesn't sound like any of the college guys i've talked to okay like i've talked to hundreds of college students in my travels none of them sound like this dude I i've never had any one person just deliver like you know what the university really means to me in this profound monologue that i've definitely not thought about before. The hill that our campus sits on is called Trothgeta, which means wild potato hill in the lower Tanana Dena language. Surrounding us are extensive trails like this one that stretch far beyond the campus and intertwine throughout the entire town. 
just from my dorm, I can easily step onto trails that I've skied and run on since I was a little lad. UAF is an incredible- Yeah, right there. A little lad? Like, find me one young adult who would refer to himself as a little lad. Please, find me one. Anyone. I, I would love to meet him. I would love to meet him. All right, this, this is pretty clearly scripted to me with certain talking points. And while he may have interjected a little bit of his own character and personality into this, it's, it's feeling to me like this is pretty set up, you know, like he was chosen for this role. He was put in this position. He was given some lines and they're filming out here, you know, just on some trail talking to the guy. This atmosphere is unique to Alaska and can be unique in your college journey as well. Thank you for your time, Alex. It's time I pass it back to you. Good, sir. All right, so yeah, not not a bad little bit. Again, maybe maybe I'm being a little too harsh on the dude here. He's obviously, you know, again, a film major. He would know how to write a decent script. Maybe he was in, maybe he did this whole bit himself. And maybe he got a little creative with his little lad comment. I don't know. But uh, even the segues and stuff, obviously this shows that there was a level of planning here and like co coordination between the university, this show, these students, um, I have very little in the way of coordination when it comes to my videos on this channel. Like I don't script anything. I don't even really give the universities the chance to edit my stuff. I have done like two advanced screenings for two universities. Um, and they didn't have any notes. And then there was one where I was asked to blur out some names because they weren't actually students yet. They were visible on a screen. Hey, sure. Whatever. But like, Nobody has any creative input on my channel, not even the universities that I go to visit. So to me, it seems pretty clear that there's already like a working relationship here in terms of like what points the university wants to talk about and what our guy Alex is talking about and maybe which ones come from the students and which ones come from the show. Frisbee, okay, or disc golf or whatever that is. Thank you, Nolan. You are right. As perfect as Fairbanks is, as unique a location and as dynamic as the seasons are, great people are what make the University of Alaska Fairbanks such a special place. Take care. Life on campus is more than hitting the books. At UAF, there are over 100 student clubs and more than 400 activities taking place here every year. From esports to karaoke, there's something for everyone. Like most UAF students, Riley is an active member of the campus community. Riley, tell us more about the ways to get involved at UAF. All right, so Alex is more more of like an MC, kind of putting these students on stage, essentially, to kind of give them like, you know, the opportunity to explain things on behalf of the university. That's kind of what I'm starting to see here. I don't know how much analysis there is from Alex or if he's just going to continue to sort of pass the mic to these students who've been prepared for this role, right? Um, you know, yeah, I guess we'll see. <laughs> Thanks for the warm introduction, Alex. Originally, I had intended on a different college, but a last minute housing mix up changed my fate and I came here to the University of Alaska Fairbanks. A, I felt the only man, way- a last minute housing mix up, that seems like a, uh, what was your other option? Like, where did you end up going? <laughs> like, I wanna know the full story there. Where were you gonna go? And then what happened with the housing? And then how'd you get to Alaska? Like. That's the kind of thing I would have gone into and would have asked about and would have featured here because there's no shame in mentioning another university's name and like talking about them in the video. Like if you genuinely went to, had plans to go to another university, that's fine. Like that's normal. Most people apply to multiple colleges these days. Like it's not any knock on University of Alaska. Um, but I think it would also be cool to like make this experience more genuine and be like, what do what did you go through to get here? And, you know, obviously if you had to settle for the University of Alaska, maybe you might've come in with a negative attitude or like not had been so excited about it. And like, I would love to hear how that changed, you know, but we just kind of go straight to like hey, a little housing mix up. And now here I am. Like, I feel like that's a key part of her story that we're not getting. Way to have a positive college experience was to leave my home state of Alaska, but I was quickly proven wrong. One of my okay, so there was that little detail. Leave the home state. So she was planning on leaving Alaska, but it didn't work out. So she stayed in Alaska. 
Yeah. Again, I wish I had heard more. I wish I had known more about what she was planning on doing here. My favorite things about UAF is how easy it is to get involved on campus. If I could give one piece of advice to incoming students, it would be to put yourself out there and get involved, no matter how intimidating it might be. Through the experiences I've had, I've met lifelong friends, made connections to establish my future career path, and had so much fun in the process. I truly feel that I have flourished here at UAF, and that you can too. That's all I've got. Back to you, Alex. All right, nice little details. Um, I like that they had her throw in pictures of her experiences. Like you can see clearly these are things that she has done. Like she's in these, you know, different settings, like going bowling and being in these pictures of going to the state capitol. That stuff's cool. That's that's a nice personal touch they've added. I like it. You can also tell a lot of these stuff, a lot of these things are like pickup shots that we definitely needed to get, you know, so like we're going to go make sure we go get a shot of her bowling, go get a shot of her walking out of a room with somebody else, you know, so there's obviously some production stuff here. I would imagine that maybe they had gotten an idea of some of the things she wanted to say and then maybe built around that. I'm curious kind of how the production went with this person and their experiences. Uh, it does seem genuine that she did all those things, you know. It's cool that they highlight that stuff. I'm okay with that. Thank you, Riley. Those are just some of the ways to get involved. Nanook traditions include Starvation Gulch, the annual fall bonfire contest, winter carnival, and spring fest. It sounds like there's no shortage of fun in the sun and snow at UAF. About one fifth of UAF students are in some way affiliated with the military or are veterans. That's a lot. Student veterans, active duty service members, and their families have extra support at UAF. Jasmine is an Army veteran and reservist, but also a full-time student. Jasmine, please share a little bit about what it's like to be a student veteran at UAF. Thank you, Alex. Hi, everyone. Meet my Cargi Zero. I was born in Minnesota, but grew up in Manila, Philippines. Being a first-generation American, I knew I wanted to be independent, to serve and be part of something bigger. I left the comfort of my home and enlisted in the U.S. Army. I discovered how much I enjoy medicine and aviation and transferred my credits from international university and military training into the University of Alaska Fairbanks. I dream of going back into the military service as a pilot physician. For now, I am grateful to be a nano. Whether you are currently serving, about to deploy, or are a veteran ready to continue or pursue higher education, University of Alaska Fairbanks is definitely a top choice. That is all. Back to you, Alex. Who is this for? Who is supposed to be watching this? Like, if the idea of this channel is to go visit a whole bunch of colleges and a whole bunch of different places and, like, give you perspective on universities that you can choose, like, who is this really appealing to? How many people are like, man, I'm in the military and I want to also go to college? I should go to Alaska. Like, I don't feel like there's a clear-cut audience yet. I don't, I don't know who this is for yet. Thank you, Jasmine. UAF is proud to have earned and maintained the military-friendly distinction and offers resident tuition, flexible online degree programs, education benefit advising, and more for military and veteran students and their families. That's incredible. Take care. Leaving home to go to college is exciting, but can also be overwhelming. And UAF Rural Student Services, or RSS, supports students making their transition from living in rural Alaskan communities to Fairbanks. Cultural programming and activities help make home not seem so far away. Janah is from Nelson Island, near Bethel, Alaska, studying rural development at UAF. Tell us more about it, Janah. Jamai, everyone. Jamai means hello in my Yupik language, a native Alaskan language. When I was looking for a university, I had asked people where they prefer to go to school at, and they have mentioned the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Ever since then, I'm happy I chose to attend UAF. When I first left my village, Tuxik Bay, Alaska, to attend the UAF, I did not expect to learn so much from my program, the social life, and meet so many people. This has been the best experience I've had so far, and I'm looking forward to making more memories. That's my story. Back to you, Alex. 
All right, I like that one. Uh, I think that's cool. You get a taste of like what the local students are like. Definitely, if you are coming to a campus from somewhere else, you would want to know kind of like what kind of people are you going to interact with? What can you expect from the student body here? And we're getting a good like diverse selection of people. And I think it's kind of cool here in this case, especially that you have a guy who comes from rural Alaska. Obviously, it would be like a, a dream, right, to go to like the flagship university in the state when you come from a little village. And I think it's cool that we touch on some of the cultural differences that that brings about, you know? So I, I like that experience. I, I think it was cool that they shared his case. Thank you, Janach. One fifth of UAF students are Alaska Native or American Indian. And UAF is committed to partnering with indigenous communities to preserve the and this guy is always saying everything in this super exciting but pleasant way. There's like never any negative emotions. It's almost like everything's perfect. Like I, I feel like I, I like I mean the guy's job is just to kind of what come in, give a quick stat, and move on to the next one. Like I haven't seen any real personality or character from this dude. This is just a dude hosting a show. I, I wonder if he's even met these people. Like, has he even talked to any of the students that have appeared on this thing so far? Because, like, from what it looks like to me, he shows up and gets his shots. They also record all these shots with these students. So maybe he's doing this all at the same time with them. I don't know. But I, I got questions. Like, I don't, why don't they ever interact? Why don't they ever have any, like, scenes together? Like, why doesn't he just interview them right there? <laughs> like, why doesn't he, you know, go and do at least one scene with them or something? Or even that hello and goodbye. Like, you could at least do the little, like, hello, goodbye scene together or something to kind of get, like, some illusion that they've actually met and talked. Because from my perspective, it just looks like a bunch of vignettes, like a little a bunch of little skits, like monologues that have been recorded. Like, we're going to get another vignette, and then when he's going to come on for another 30 seconds, and then we're going to get another vignette, he's going to come on for another 30 seconds. And and thinking back to the, the, hang on, let's just go look at it. Let's go look at it. Like, how many videos were there? There were like nine or ten. So we just got indigenous studies, so we're probably going to get the athletics one next, right? Yeah, I'm just missing the connection. Like, what's this guy's you know, take on the university? What's his uh, analysis? Uh, why is this guy the guy doing it? Like, what what connects him to this whole topic? Like, all I see here is a generic presenter that could have been anybody, but it says this guy named Alex. Like, I don't, I don't get this. I don't understand what this is trying to do. Diverse languages, culture, <laughs> and traditions unique to Alaska. Collegiate sports are a core part okay, of every yeah, university. Okay, called it. Sports, UAF sports bit. A Division I hockey team, as well as men's and women's basketball, cross country, running and skiing, volleyball, swimming, and rifle teams. UAF's rifle team holds 10 NCAA well, championships. It is Alaska. Victory. They like guns. We're going to hear from Harrison, one of Nanook Athletic's star hockey players. Passing the puck to you, Harrison. Oh, he's from Toronto, eh? Thanks, Alex, and hello, everyone. I'm super stoked to be here with y'all. Ever since I was a kid, I dreamed about playing Division I hockey. When University of Alaska Fairbanks recruited me, I knew it was gonna be an amazing fit. I've been given the opportunity to achieve my goal of being a professional hockey player, as well as earn a degree in business administration. With extra tutoring, personal advisors, and flexible schedules, we have everything we need to succeed in our sport and the classroom. Hang on, I need to go back to this Excel chart for just a second here. Goals for the meeting, annual fundraiser, volleyball game, blue and gold for hockey, basketball game. These are the four items on the meeting. Um, but it's not even saved, it's just book one. Like, it, it, he just got done typing that. Like, I think we need to just appreciate how somebody was like, bro, I need you to whip up something that looks like you guys are doing something in this meeting. <laughs> and then like, we'll get a shot, we'll pan across your MacBook with Excel. Dude, it still says book one. It, the cursor is still up in the square. Like, he, he he hasn't finished typing it, I don't think. I don't think he's hit, hit enter. Like, this is such a forced shot. I'm like, hey, let's get four people in a meeting pretending to laugh and nod and talk. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Advisors and flexible schedules. We have everything we need to succeed in our sport and the classroom. Good focus, pool. Good Being focus, in Alaska pool. gives our athletic department a unique position. We travel across the USA and play schools from all over. Just last year, our hockey team played Maine, Colorado, Arizona, and Minnesota, just to name a whoa, few. Whoa, 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 there's hockey in Arizona? Last year, our hockey team played Maine, Colorado, Arizona. 
I have questions. That I did not know. How has that place got hockey? What are they doing? Who's playing hockey in Arizona? How bad did you beat? How bad did you beat them? Uh, yeah, probably was Arizona State, right? Wow, they actually did play ice hockey last year. It looks like you guys won most of those games. You won those games by like one goal. I mean, it's freaking Arizona. You're Alaska. I, I, I have... This is what I would be asking about right now. And Minnesota, just to name a few. UAF also provides a great experience at home. We have a huge fan base from the town That's of Fairbanks cool. who show up cool. screaming at our home games. Also, having my degree in business administration makes me feel confident in anything I want to do post my hockey career. I'll, I'll well, as long as that thing you want to do is administrative business. Because, like, if you suddenly want to get into surgery, I mean, then that wouldn't work out, right? always recommend other athletes, especially hockey players, to take a strong look at UAF. We're definitely doing something special up here. So again, okay, now this becomes a bit of a like recruiting speech, right? Like you're kind of hoping that there's some hockey player kid watching this and that he's made it this far into the video and that he's seen this and it's like a little commercial for the athletics department at the university, which is cool. You know, hey, they got to get their promotion out there. But, but that's what I'm starting to feel like. I'm starting to feel like this whole thing is set up to be a giant promotion mechanism for the university, right? Like this is not about somebody trying to learn about the university. It's about somebody trying to give the university a platform to promote itself in the ways that it feels it needs to, right? Like to talk, these are the talking points. These are the beats that the UAF wants to hit, right? Things like, you know, military families and stuff, the indigenous populations, the sports stuff, the clubs, right? So like, clearly they have their angles that they're trying to get out there and they've used these students to do that. And now the college tour just puts them all together. I again, I, I feel like, the university probably then has a hand in the script, has picked the students, and has, you know, influenced the final result here. But I, I'm willing to bet the college tour guys themselves come and probably shoot this. Like, this all looks professionally shot, right? I would have to think the college tour guys have, like, a set schedule for the day. They come in, like, all right, you're going to meet with this kid first, and then this kid first, and this kid first. And we're going to go on these different locations and campus and film. Like, that seems like what's going on here. Um, but yeah, it clearly seems to me that the points and the messages are decided by the university more than anybody else. College tour isn't organically exploring these topics and like picking what to highlight from what I can tell. Uh, they, again, there doesn't seem to be a coherent theme or like message to all of this. It's just, here's quick vignettes uh, from students in the university. UAF student athletes are something to cheer about on the ice, court, trails, range, pool, and in the classroom. That was awesome, thanks again. It's no secret that research is a big deal here. UAF's location is well situated for Arctic and climate research. But no matter what your major is, you'll have opportunities to go outside the classroom and dig deeper into tomorrow's challenges. Caitlin's here to share some of the ways that students can participate in research, including some of her own. Over to you, Caitlin. Koyonak Alex, I'll take it from here. As introduced, my name is Caitlin. I now want to introduce myself in Ibak, my native language. Uvanga totuk nolak ni chisika Caitlin, and you pangaronga kikitagaromingaronga, and you nak tunga Fairbanks ni. Ang yoka ka na so luglu good vagalu, ang naka totuglu suyuglu ni sak tunga civil engineering. Minwak tunga University of Alaska Fairbanks. Apparently, her language does not have a uh, term for civil engineering, which. It was understandable, but that's that's kind of a cool intro. I dig it. It's me, Sismani Ukiuni. I chose to attend UAF to stay near my home and attend the best engineering program in Alaska. Lastly, URSA, the Undergraduate Research and Scholarly Activity Office, provides funding and mentorship for students to complete their own research and attend scientific conferences. Yeah, so again, we have another like definite uh, setup shot, right? We got the, the student who's hosting, talking to two random people, pointing at a brochure. Again, just like a lot of random pickup shots. They, I mean, I guess they add a little bit of immersion to the thing, uh, but at the same time, I just would be content to like talk to this person and, you know, hear what they have to say about their research experiences, right? Not just talking about the offices and the like ways the university does it, but like, give me more about your stuff. Like, what did you do? 
With the Alaska Native Science and Engineering Program, we have weekly meetings to meet different professionals in STEM and host study groups. As a senior, I was a research fellow with the Arctic Domain Awareness Center and worked on the Arctic Facilities and Infrastructure Environmental Change Risk Index. The index was created for the U.S. Coast Guard to help them assess facilities under their purview. I presented this project at an URSA Research and Scholarly Activity Day. With this research group, I even traveled to Utqiagvik for a week. I received my bachelor's degree here and decided to continue my education for a master's. As a graduate student, I'm working on a research project to determine the possible negative impact of permafrost degradation on the water quality of the Woolock River, a river in my region. Well, EUAF, I made the most of the resources granted to me. I'm now empowering Native Alaskans and working to incorporate traditional knowledge into my research. Devra, that's it for me. Back to you, Alex. All right, so that got a little bit better. I like how she did, as soon as I was done complaining about it, she explained what she does, and we got a few shots of her out in the wild doing her thing. That's kind of cool. Again, I feel like you could just integrate what you're talking about with the offices and stuff. Like, go ahead and introduce me to one of your, you know, professors at the graduate level, and, like, just tell me more about yourself. Like, I, I think it's super cool that you want to get to know more about a specific person's experience at the university and, like, what they've done, and that's a good example for what other people could do. But again, like, it's produced in such a way that it's like, first we have to kind of blow a lot of smoke up the university's ass and list all the things that the university has in that regard, some of which have nothing to do with her. You know, and even, like, the hockey guy. Like, yeah, it's cool. That, okay, you want to mention that there's, like, a bunch of other, you know, sports at the university. Sure. Okay, but, like... You're the hockey guy. Talk about hockey. Tell us about your hockey experience. Talk about how you got recruited. Talk about that first time you got that offer. Like, I feel like that's the story. That's his story. So it's like all these, what I noticed with all these student stories is like, they're kind of telling the university's version of things before they tell their story. And so their story kind of becomes secondary to whatever the university wanted to say here. Thanks, Caitlin. 36% of UAF bachelor students Here's complete my statistic. a research thesis or honors project before graduation. UAF is preparing the next generation of leaders and problem solvers by giving students hands-on experience in research teams and internships working on real-world projects. That is amazing. He keeps saying, that is amazing like every single time. That is amazing. I'm going to do a super cut of uh, every single time he says, that is amazing. That is amazing. That was awesome. That's incredible. That's important. And that is awesome. Also, dude, lose the bracelets. Like these bracelets, I, I, I don't know what you were thinking, but you should lose them. You really should. Uh, trust me. So yeah, again, my man Alex just kind of comes on stage to sort of just drop a statistic and, and move on to the next person, right? He's just a bumper. He is just a spiritless creature that passes us from one person to the next. I feel like I'm starting to think about who this is for. Maybe this is for the moms out there. Like, I feel like there's moms that would watch this on their TV on Amazon Prime and they would like see this guy and feel like, oh, this is a nice university for my daughter. Like she'll go to this college and look how nice it is. And then she can like show this to her friends and be like, look, my daughter's university was put on the Amazon. Jeff Bezos said it's good. And that, that might be what this is for. I, I, I think that could be the audience, which would explain why there's like almost no views on YouTube. That, that could make sense. Take care. We're gonna take a look at life on campus, the residence halls, and where UAF students spend some time, get coffee, and just hang out. To tell us more, let me introduce Moody. Moody knows what it's like to live, work, and play at UAF. They're a resident of the Moore Bartlett Scarland. Okay, here we go, they, uh-huh. All right, careful pronoun use. He, you notice how he emphasized that there? Like he made sure to, like it, it didn't come out quite naturally, like he had to really push himself to say it housing complex, have a campus job, and are a leader for student advocacy. Over to you, Moody. No, I'm not gonna lie. The, uh, the uh, subtitle that says transition whooshing, a little bit kind of funny in this situation, just a little bit. Hi everyone, Alex gave such a groovy description to me. There's nothing else left to say. Just kidding. Being honest, I first started attending UAF purely due to location. It was conveniently nearby. However, this turned out to be most serendipitous. The people and programs here at UAF have given me a real sense of belonging. Serendipitous. Growing up, I had a bogus home life. All right, groovy, serendipitous, 
bogus. I want to believe that there's a person that speaks that way. I'm not sure there is. I, I have questions. All right, Moody. Like, I want to talk to Moody for real. I want to just have a real conversation with Moody that does not involve looking at the camera or reading a script. I just want to know how Moody actually speaks in real life because I would love to get to know Moody. Moody seems like an interesting person. When I left, I left knowing that it was permanent, but UAF has given me a place to call home and has put me in touch with many excellent people I'm proud to call my family. As a non-binary student and creatively motivated person, being a UAF resident has been wonderful. I never would have pictured myself surrounded by countless friends or having a role in so many programs that provide resources to those in need. All right, as much as I love talking about myself, that's enough for me. Alex, pass the spotlight. All right, I like how Moody straight up told Alex what he's going to do. Pass the spotlight. Literally just pass the spotlight to somebody else. Um, that wasn't bad. If we, if we put aside the definitely scripted language that was given for Moody to read, uh, yeah, really good. Thank you, Moody. It's so great that you found your place at UAF. That's important. At UAF's campus community, it's a home away from home for over 400 student residents. Living learning communities, clubs, and activities are ways that students can form friendships that last a lifetime. Most students take at least one online class, and UAF offers more than 45 programs entirely online. UAF's flexibility really appeals to Sarah. She's living life on the go, and by taking online classes through UAF's eCampus, she can fit her studies into the rest of her life. Take it away, Sarah. Hi, Alex. Thank you so much. This After growing shot. up listening to John Denver CDs on repeat, I knew I wanted to live in Alaska. After I got recruited to ski for UAF, I knew that was my one-way ticket here. Since then, I've been immersed in the Fairbanks lifestyle. I've kept a hybrid of personal life and school life, including competing collegiately, creating art in the campus studios, working with muskox and reindeer, sending the local mountain bike trails, and even joining a chainsaw crew. I've also gotten involved with other clubs on campus. I will cherish the friendships and experiences that I've been so lucky to have here, and I will forever be proud to call myself a Nanook. So Alex, are you coming biking with me or what? No, he definitely isn't. I don't think he, he will ever bike with you, unfortunately. It's a shame that you're going to be stood up and have to bike on your own. Here you are biking on your own. Yep. Yeah. Oh, hang on. We got a cameraman in the background. Hang on. Hang on. We might have had our first sighting of a cameraman in the background. Let's just back this up just a teeny bit. Are you coming bit. biking with me or what? All right. So she's she's biking here and we, we cut to here. All right. So we had somebody else further down the road. Yeah, she was going around the curve here. This guy's got that shot. All right. So we got this dude, Alaska man. Clearly, we pulled the car over so she could do this, and we got the shot. Like, I feel like they could have moved the truck. The bike was probably in the truck. Um, <laughs> like, all right, cool. We got some pickup shots of you on your bike looking determined. That's cool. Pop a little wheelie. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. UAF has excelled at remote learning for decades, and they're used to delivering education over great distances. Alaska's a big state, after all. With eCampus, UAF is wherever you are on your terms. So like, all right, this is one example of something that would have been really good to go into further because I think that's actually an interesting detail to highlight. Like you're talking about remote distance education in 2022, where most universities experience with this is a last minute thing they had to do in 2020. Some of them had, you know, remote programs before, but this is like a university that had a remote program out of necessity. Uh, you could have told me how long they've been doing this. You could have told me like w what they do differently. You could have compared this to other places, right? Like you could have given me a better idea of how students feel about the remote learning thing. Like we got one person's uh, perspective, but again, every one of these bits is so canned, right? It's just like, here's two and a half minutes of this person monologuing about this thing that they do. And it's like, this is a fact about the university that makes it very unique and makes it perhaps better in some ways compared to other universities. And that's something that I think should go in here more. Like that's a topic that could be explored in much greater detail. 
but instead we've got a bunch of different things that the university wants to highlight and we can only allot like two and a half minutes to each of them. It just doesn't go in UAF's depth. UAF's community and technical college offers certificate and associate degrees, occupational endorsements, and specialized training programs. Developing workforce skills and giving students the opportunity to advance in their professional careers. Oscar plans to be a fire science sounds cool. And is in that... the fire science program, and he's going to tell us about his experience at UAF's Fire Academy. Over to you, Oscar. How much longer is this thing? All right, we're almost there. I'm starting to lose my patience with this thing. Oh, I'm losing the light. I see a window. Hey Alex, thanks for having me here today. It's really great to represent my school and program in this way. The University of Alaska Fairbanks Community and Technical College, or CTC, offers more than 40 one-year certificates or two-year associate degree programs in a variety of- Okay, so again, like this is something that is definitely good to know if you live in Alaska and like you're considering a local technical college or community college type of approach or an associate's degree, like this makes perfect sense for that kind of person. That doesn't make any sense for anybody else. Like nobody else, there's no international student that's like, I think I wanna to go to the University of Alaska for one year to do like a fire certificate. No, I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, I don't think there's any out of state students that are like, yeah, let's go to the University of Alaska and study fire science for a year or two. Like, no offense to this guy, what he's doing. Awesome program for this dude, I think. And we need people who learn these skills. But like, this is something that would only appeal to people in that area. And so what I don't understand is what it does here. Like, why are we promoting this on Amazon Prime and on YouTube for the world when this applies to just such a tiny fraction of the population that might check this out? Like, I don't really see the advantage to the viewer. This is the kind of stuff I actually deliberately avoid. Like when I make content, I try to look for stuff that is gonna have a little bit of mass appeal. Like the main things that people want to get to know about a university. Like, cause you gotta think about people beyond just people living nearby. The supportive family dynamic of UAF fire community on campus and the close knit vibe of the university in general is similar to the small community I came from in Oregon and has made this transition seamless. So this guy actually came from Oregon to here to do this. That's the thing that I'm not sure I understand fully. Like, what brought you from Oregon to here? Like, explain yourself. Why wouldn't you just do this in Oregon? Because you totally could do this in Oregon. Like, what would have made you go all the way to Alaska to practice fire science? I look forward to continuing my journey here at UAF. The Fire Academy is set the I stage guess we're for not going to know. Here. And no matter what, I'll have this wealth of experience to help me move forward as a firefighter. This is my story. Back to you. It wasn't your story. I want to know how you got here. I want to know why you're doing this here. You just told me you're from Oregon. Like, tell me the story, dude. What happened? Did your parents move? Did you choose this university? Was like, did you commit a crime and you needed to leave the Continental 48 and go up to Alaska? Because, you know, a lot of people in Alaska have prior records. Uh, but like, I don't know that. That wasn't really your story. That was a small fraction of your story. That was the parts of your story that the university wanted us to hear. And that's the part that kills me. Like, I would like to know. Like, that would have been one of my first questions with this dude is like, wait, why are you here in Alaska if you're from Oregon? Explain yourself. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if the answer was something as simple as my dad moved here for work. And so that makes it sound like he didn't really have a choice in where he wanted to go to college. And so it doesn't sound as appealing to the university. So we're not going to include that information. Instead, we're just going to slip that little detail in there. Just, just, just say, hey, say you're from Oregon. And it'll make people think, oh, I could go to Alaska too. Like, it doesn't accurately or honestly or completely represent this student's experience. It's okay if the story isn't perfect. It's okay if it doesn't fit every single institutional goal or like checklist that the university has. It, that's okay. Thank you, Oscar. And if fighting fires isn't what you had in mind, UAF's community and technical college offers programs in nearly every field, including culinary arts, early childhood education, health fields, bookkeeping, paralegal studies, aviation maintenance, automotive technology, law enforcement, welding, process technology, construction management. All right, so bro, you're just listing off like every single program they have at the technical college. Again, like for whom, I ask, for whom? 
who wants this? Who wants this info? Obviously, the university wants you to say it, which is why you're going through the list. I wonder how many takes my man needed to get it right. Because, I mean, they must have had some cue cards for this. He's squinting more. He's definitely squinting more, which, which would include indicate to me that he's trying to read. Information technology and much, much more. Support for first generation students, students with documented disabilities and more. They'll say not only accesses these resources, but as a tutor, she gets the opportunity to support other students too. Take it away, Dulce. Sweet, thanks Alex. What's up everyone? As a first generation college student, I had no idea what resources were available or what my major would be. That's until I found my community at TRIO Student Support Services, or SSS, here at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Rural Student Services is a program dedicated to helping rural All and right. Alaska students. told us Native about this one before. I was gonna say I've seen that building before. Over 20% of UAF student population transition into college. Incoming students are eligible for four-year scholarships based on merit and financial need. Whatever background you're from or major you choose, UAF support centers are ready to help you accomplish your goals. I'm so grateful to live in the beautiful city of Fairbanks where the scenery is amazing and so is the support. Wishing you all the best, everyone. Alex, over to you. All right, I think she was the most genuine one that I have heard so far. I feel like she was actually giving a pretty realistic account of her experiences and like naturally delivered it. So good job to you, Dulce. Thank you, Dulce. Trio, Student Support Services, Rural Student Services, Disability Services, the Financial Aid Office, and the Student Success Center sure are great resources for students. From scholarships to tutoring, students can count on support from UAF. And, and so right here, like this is where we need to get into a very important topic. How much does this shit cost? Like, get, can you get into those scholarships? Can you talk about how much we can get? Can you talk about how much financial aid is in there? Like, you've just told me there's an office for it, which guess what? Every university has an office for that. Like almost every university has every every office that they just listed, okay? Like... I mean, it's nice to point those things out, you know, and I'm, I've mentioned things like that in my videos too. But like, if I want to get into a university, I got to talk about cost. I got to talk about, you know, those scholarships. So let's see if they do that. I would love to see that. That would make me immediately increase my opinion of this show. And that is awesome. It is well, awesome, though. It's awesome. Not amazing this time. It's awesome. Folks, we're nearing the end of the college tours journey with UAF. But your journey with UAF is just beginning. I want to thank all the students who shared their stories with us. Alaska is an incredible and beautiful place, but the real showstopper is the warm, welcome, and strong community built by the extraordinary people who live, work, play, and study here. Up here, they're looking for solutions to the problems that are faced the whole world over. If you're looking for an experience like no other, I invite you to look north to the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Take care, everyone. Okay, so literally none of the important questions have been answered. None of the important questions have been answered. All we got was 11 students kind of reading very scripted statements about their activities and their lifestyle while making sure to mention some key points that the university wants to. And we have a guy in the middle whose job is just to pass the microphone from one student to the next and mention a couple fun facts along the way. What? How do I get admitted? Let's just start with that. Let's just start with like the, the most basic question. Okay, let's say, let's say that I want to now apply to the University of Alaska Fairbanks. What do I do? Where do I go? Who do I talk to? What button do I push? Is this on Common App? Do I have to use their own application? Are they like on some random Alaska app? Uh, when's the deadlines? When should I apply? Uh, how much money does it fucking cost? Like, how do you not tell me anything about money? How do you say nothing about money in the entire episode? That is absolutely irresponsible. Like, 
Okay, you're highlighting a university, but you're not getting into one of the most important factors in that university, which is how much it costs. Which, this day and age, the way university tuition prices are through the roof, that is a huge question that needs to be answered. You need to talk about that. Now, I understand that you might not want to say a number today that goes out of style tomorrow, but just do it. Give your viewers a little bit of credit. Like, they can go... And seeing all oh, this video was posted in 2022, so the prices must be 2022. Like, no one's going to watch this 10 years from now and be like, hey, the price wasn't what it said on the college tour. Because you'd be like, yeah, no shit, that thing was filmed 10 years ago. Like, go ahead and talk about price. Why don't you? I'll, I'll try to play devil's advocate. All right. It's called the college tour. It's just a tour. It's just to show you about the college. But the thing is, you're talking up every single point that the university wants to make. You're hitting all of the drums that the university tells you to hit. You're talking about military service. You know, you're talking about indigenous lands. You're talking about programs that would only appeal to a very small group of people that might live nearby. So you are doing propaganda for the university. You are, you are pushing the university's narrative, but you won't talk about the most important questions in college, which are how much does it cost? How do you get admitted? Those are two of the most important questions, period, and neither of them were even touched upon. We don't know what the acceptance rate is. We don't know if there's an early decision deadline. We don't know if it's rolling admission. We don't know if there's an essay requirement. We don't know anything about the admission process, and we don't know anything about the scholarships or financial aid. Like, you could have gone into, you could have done your same format. You could have, you could have literally taken your same format, okay, Jeff Bezos? You could have taken your same format, and you could have just done a single two and a half minute video of a student just listing off their scholarships, just talking about their profile. They could have been like, look, I had this SAT score, and I had these kinds of grades in high school, so I got these merit-based scholarships, but then, you know, I asked for institutional aid, and I got a Pell Grant, and I also got an extra grant from the university, and then my faculty gave me this, like, you could do all that. You could find that student. If, if the university is just gonna handpick people and say, get out in front of that camera and read this, then why not get one of those people? Why not get one that does that? So clearly to me, this whole thing is just a giant commercial. It's a, it's a giant commercial for the university, just strictly trying to highlight the best things they have, right? Or like the things that make them special, which again, hey, I, I'm all for talking about things that make universities unique, and I'm all about talking to students and getting their perspectives. Those two things are great. but. If you're not going to touch on those extremely important questions about the college, those things that people really need to know, then all you're really doing is pushing propaganda. All this, all this content does is promote the university. It's no longer real if you're hitting certain talking points that the university wants to hit. I see things that catch my attention in my interviews and then I talk about them and I highlight them. Like I highlight the things that get my attention. So you know, when I'm at Binghamton, I just got done editing Binghamton, right? What did I highlight from Binghamton? I talked about their nursing program. They had a great nursing program. I got to see the facilities. Everything looked really, really good. And I, I, everybody I talked to, right, there were a lot of people in pre-med and there were a lot of people in nursing from the interviews. So it was clear to me that like sciences and nursing are really strong areas at that university. It's a great pre-med school. It's a great nursing school. So that's what I chose to focus on and highlight. And that's some of the stuff I talked about. All right. I talked about scholarship amounts and the way that you can get financial aid at the university because if you're an out-of-state student that matters if you're an international student that matters I talked about admissions requirements and SAT scores. I actually accidentally underreported their SAT score. It's higher than I said. They're pretty selective. I talked about those numbers, okay, and what you need to get in because if you seriously want to go to Binghamton, you need to know that stuff. And and if I seriously want to go to the University of Alaska, maybe it doesn't matter. All right, maybe it doesn't matter because the University of Alaska and like not too many people are just beating down the door trying to go there. Maybe you just get in easy. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't worth talking about. But at the very least, a call to action that says, hey, this is who you can talk to if you're interested in applying to the university. This is where you need to go. Like, that would have been so easy to add to this. And they didn't do that. And this whole format, this whole format where Alex Boylan, I don't even, again, I don't know who that is, but this guy whose name is in front of my face, like, it, it, what is he there for? Who is he? Why, do, why is this the guy that is talking about this university? I don't get it. Right, hang on, let's see, let's see, just let's, Let's pay closer attention to these credits. Maybe we can learn something. So we got our students. Campus, okay, okay. Here we go. 
Here we go. This is what I needed to see right here. This is it. Campus marketing team. We've got three credits, Office of Admissions, Enrollment Management, Communications, and University Relations. So University Relations is the PR team, basically, for the whole university. Office of Admissions obviously has specific things that they need to get out there, because like that's who I meet with, generally. I reach out to the admissions office directly uh, when I make my videos. Enrollment Management Communications, that right there says a lot. Okay, these three, these three here, all right, these three matter, okay? First of all, university relations means that the main points of the university are gonna be hit. Those are the things that the university feels need to be included in these things. Things like the opening statement about, you know, residing on ancestral lands and stuff. That's probably university relations. Office of admissions is who's gonna tell you about the programs and some of that stuff, and so, I think that, you know, they probably were the minority here, which is why they're, they're listed third, you know. Um, and that's one of the reasons I talk to admissions offices instead of talking to anyone else. I don't talk to press teams. I don't talk to university relations. I talk to office of admissions because those are the people that actually will admit you. And that's who I want to talk to. I want to talk to the people who are going to decide if you get in or not. And I want to know what they want and what they're looking for and what kind of students are appealing to them. Because at the end of the day, either you want to go to the university and get in or you don't. And that's who matters. But enrollment management, now, enrollment management is like the, the seductive part. And I feel like a lot of their beats were in here. You know, talking about all those different offices and like touching on the community and all the like clubs and stuff. Like they're, they're trying to sell you, right? Office of Admissions is more like, they're not trying to sell as much as they are, you know, filter. They want to filter. They, they don't want everybody in the world to apply. They have enough work to do. They want the right people to apply. That's why I talk to them. Enrollment management people, they will, they will make their university sound like the greatest thing since sliced bread. And that's clearly what's going on here. So the campus marketing team obviously has had a lot of input in this. All right, all right, college tour. But now, I told you guys at the beginning of this video that there was something more sinister to what this is and what it's trying to do. And I'm gonna show you what that is. And it, the answer is right down here, if we turn off our closed captions, TCT LLC. Um, this is not just a production company, okay? This is not just a TV show on Amazon Prime. There is more going on here that they don't want you to know. And I can see Jeff Bezos' grandmaster plan, and I'm gonna reveal it to you right now. Let's make sure we're done. Okay, we're done. All right, now let's talk about the Grandmaster Plan. All right, click here. Now, take a look at what you see here. I want you to take a look at what this really is because this right here is the real purpose of Jeff Bezos' plan, okay? This is the real purpose of the college tour is to turn this website, all right, into a collector of your data, all right? What Jeff Bezos is trying to do is get you to go here and give him your data. All right, and I can show you, I can prove it to you. Because look at what's going on here. Why, why would you need to do this? Why wouldn't you just have a list of featured schools? No, 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 you've got by state, okay? There's all these different boxes. Hawaii, they haven't been to Hawaii yet. Ala Alabama, not yet. Alaska, okay, all right, it's up to date. Average cost, again, something that was not discussed, something that was not discussed. Let's see what happens as I filter this. Up to 10,000. Up to $10,000, are you kidding me? Maybe with in-state tuition, financial aid, and no residence cost, but there's no way that that's up to $10,000 University of Alaska, but okay. Look at how there's these other details. Look at how there's these other details. Like clearly, Jeff Bezos has a plan for this show to see every university in the world. Also, they did say universities around the world, but um, I don't see any other countries here. I mean, I obviously know that the United States is the only country in the world that really matters, but like, I, seems like that doesn't vibe. I mean, again, let's just go back to the homepage. Around the world, only US states. Sorry, rest of the world. Jeff Bezos doesn't care about your data. Um, notice acceptance rates, student to faculty ratios. Like here's a bunch of statistics that are kind of important when you're looking for college, 
But none of these were mentioned in the videos. None of these have been like discussed. So what is really going on here is what they're doing is they're collecting data. Every time you click on one of these things, they're learning a little bit about you. They Right now they think I'm only interested in studying in Alaska and Hawaii and maybe Alabama because I clicked on it accidentally. And, and I've bounced around to some different things here. And I, and I know this because notice that there's a privacy policy on this website. Why would you need a privacy policy for a website that just highlights a show? Why would you need that? Well, here's the reason, because they use your personal data to provide and improve the service. That data can include information about your browser and the pages of our service uh, you visit, unique I device identifier, diagnostic data. All this stuff means what you're doing on the website. They can collect anything that they want while you're on this website. And then that data, here's the thing that can be done with it. Look what they can do, okay? They can use this data, right? to perform contracts, which could be sales contracts, right? Um, you know, any other contract through us, through the service, all right? Um, there's also here, you know, to provide you with offers and things like that, you know, or that are similar to those you've already purchased about, right? So uh, they can also use it for other purposes, right? So Basically, what they're saying here is that they can share their data with whoever they want. Um, they, they say here, we can share your personal information with service providers. So what they're doing is collecting data on everybody who comes to this website and everybody who watches these videos. And I imagine that they're going to sell that data and add it to Amazon's gigantic pool of data that they have on every individual. Uh, and I imagine that they will also probably feed it back to the universities and stuff to let them know how their stuff performed. But clearly, this whole website, this whole program, is designed to collect your data and just get you interested in colleges, but not actually tell you how to get into them or how much they cost or any of the things that actually fucking matter about going to university. Like, this is such a superficial propaganda machine, okay? So I just wanna make it clear, this is Jeff Bezos' attempt to rip me off, all right? This is the part where I wanna get into the, the darker side of things, okay? So, like, here he interviews college admissions departments. This is what I think is interesting. Again, this is for the proof that they've stolen my idea, right? Like, he has this other set of videos where he says, hey, you know, I just I interview college admission departments. Look at this. Perfect fit to apply for the featured college. Insights on their application process. This is what I do. This is what I've been doing, okay? A lot of emphasis on this. And you notice not all of the universities he's visited are here. And why not? Because he clearly has been ripping off my ideas because Jeff Bezos told him to. Because Jacksonville University, when did he do Jacksonville? All right. Three months ago. Like, yeah, clearly they've checked out some other stuff. Clearly they've seen what other people are doing. Let's see when you did too late. You know, four months ago. Huh. Interesting how all of these are like relatively recent, you know? Was there a, like Utah was one of those old ones. Yeah, these are all relatively recent. So like, yeah, he doesn't have any of the old ones. So again, stole the idea of focusing on admissions. Let's let's check out one of these. Let's let's just see what this looks like for the University of Alaska. Let's let's see their rip off of my interviews. Welcome everyone to Ask Admissions. Today we are at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. This institution is incredible. We're doing an episode of the college tour here. You can't wait for you all to watch it. And we're very lucky because we have the, an admissions counselor, Ray Alda. She's awesome. And what's great is that Ray, you just graduated from here. Recently. I did. I just graduated class of 2021. Uh, <laughs> So notice, notice just how different the production value is already because like they're not mic'd up. There's a ton of echo in the room and it's clearly less scripted and more natural. So like obviously the entire style of the show has been scrapped to very much match the more organic approach that I have with these admissions interviews. The degree in biology here. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I think it's, it's awesome that we're doing this interview mm -hmm. because what a great perspective you have for yeah. the next generation of students and the counselors <laughs> and teachers and everyone else out there. Well, I guess the number one question that we usually get up here yeah. is like, how cold does it actually yeah, see, like, this is exactly what I was talking about. What did I say would be the first thing that I would ask about? The fucking cold. And here she is talking about that. Like, here's a real perspective. This is so much more genuine and so much more honest than anything that we just saw in the last 30 minutes of this full episode about Alaska. So, like, 
This is a this is the content that actually matters, man. Get <laughs> oh, really? That's not and so oh, really? That's funny. Really? You don't really? You didn't think that that would be something that people would ask? It's Alaska. You didn't think that people would want to know that it's cold or how cold it gets? The, the first time this has occurred to you, Alex? If, you know, it's Fairbanks, Alaska. We are one of the northernmost universities oh. in the United States. And so oh my God. Uh, a lot of our students, especially it's, those who are coming from- I am so flattered, but at the same time, I am just like so furious. Like you've clearly ripped off my segments and my approaches. You know, because you didn't have them in the beginning of your stuff. Don't tell me you haven't been looking at what I've been doing, looking over my shoulder, checking out what I do. It's so obvious. Like this must be what this must be what somebody at Gucci feels when they find like a Gucci knockoff factory. You know, like they go to the Gucci knockoff factory and they see exactly like almost the same bag, but it's not quite the same. Like the G's are a little off, and they're like, "Oh, this is a knockoff." It must be what that person feels. Just reassure them that although it does get cold, it's always really warm in the buildings, but then also yeah. okay. it's, you're going to see it in the upset. I mean, it's yeah. spectacular here. You know, <laughs> the beauty that it surrounds is yeah. the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Yeah. Do you want everyone to know out there what, what's, av what's available for everyone? So we have what's called the Nanook Pledge, which is our merit-based scholarship. Okay, so here we're getting into the scholarships, huh? Sounds familiar. It's basically a scholarship that follows bachelor's degree-seeking students for the course of four years. I believe it's $20,000 over the course of four years, so that's 5000 wow. So here we go. Here's the stuff that should be in the damn video. Here's the stuff that actually matters, how much money you can get in scholarships and stuff. And where is it? It is hidden on their website in these extra videos that are not published on the YouTubes, and it makes you wonder, why is that? I want to see if he asks about admissions. Like, I want to know if he asks about, like, how to get in. So, oh, yeah, that's fantastic. But this is all, all on our website, so you can always yeah. look up your. Yeah, it's so great. It's yeah. so great because it's just, you know, for a lot of students and, and parents and families out there, yeah. especially for generation students, it's, yeah. the whole process can just be overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly, exactly. It can all be overwhelming. It, you've said it, my friend, you've said it. And instead of trying to like simplify that and give that information to people freely, you're hiding it on your website. Great job. And, and, we, and we feel that, you know, the whole yeah. crew's been talking about it as we film around <laughs> campus. No, all... all right, the whole crew's been talking as we film around campus. So there you go. You also, I, I think it's pretty clear that they've, they've come to shoot all this stuff. They've got all the vignettes with all the students and stuff planned out in advance. And they got a big crew. Uh, with a bunch of other people that are totally unnecessary. You know how much it cost me to make a video? I spent like $200 per video, okay? 200 bucks. Jeff Bezos, if you're listening, I can be cheaper than this guy. Fire this guy, hire me, I'll get your job done for a fraction of the price. I spend about 200 bucks on every video I make when I do my tours, okay? Because I stay in a cheap hotel or an Airbnb, I rent a car at a discount rate, and I don't really like spend a lot while I'm on the road. I just eat like beef jerky and Mountain Dew. And that's how I get from place to place, okay? University of Alaska Fairbanks, the, it's an amazing institution in a spectacularly beautiful part of the country. All right, we'll talk to y'all soon. All right, and, and again, I feel like here he's a little bit more genuine, a little more honest about this stuff. But again, it's like, look at what's going on here. Look at what's going on here. They've clearly started adding this stuff to their roster, adding this to their site, right? Uh, after seeing what other people have been doing. Let's take a look at some of these other things. Let's see what else they got here. Campus towns, I'm kind of curious. Campus towns, okay. All right, so they, they have some time spent in these different places. Why aren't these on YouTube? Wait, it says it is. Okay, hang on. You don't remember? Yeah, they're not here. Well, if I click here, watch on YouTube, where does it take me? Unlisted. Okay, so these are unlisted videos. Why would they be unlisted? Why would you keep this stuff to yourself? Like, why is this unlisted? Let's just ask. Why is this unlisted? Like, why not? Why not put this out there? Let's see why. Let's find out. Few places in the world are as beautiful and majestic as Alaska. And Fairbanks, in the heart of the state, is no exception. Wait a second. This is Campus Towns, but it's this guy's whole video again. It's the same thing. Like, what is going on here? Why is it just this dude? Why is it the first bit, which you already have on this thing? Like... It's this kid. It's the same thing as this. It's the same thing as that. Like, I don't get it. 
I, I wonder if anyone will ever reply to this. They would be really funny if they did. All they did was slap a different intro on it and recycled it and now put it on their website so that you could come here and see it. But like, you're pretending you have more content than you really do. There's not, this is not a separate video. This is the same video as the one they made over here with this kid, Nolan. It's the same video. Like, there's no, th there's so much smoke and mirrors going on with this channel that like, I gotta keep asking questions. This was, this video was supposed to be over a long time ago. I said I was gonna be done. I've been recording this now for an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, I thought there was gonna be nothing more than a 40 minute reaction video. Instead, it's become a freaking rabbit hole, going down the hole and trying to figure out what the hell this is and why Jeff Bezos is trying to take my job. This is Jeff Bezos' attempt to rip me off, all right? This is an attempt to collect your data and sell it and use it for profit. This is an attempt to sell universities and those are all things that I have not and will never do, all right? Because that is my promise to you people. I will always make sure that my content is objective and that it is completely creatively controlled by me. I have had offers to take money from universities in the past. I have never taken them up. And the reason is because I want you to get the truth, all right? I want you to know what's going on. And if I saw something messed up or something I didn't like about a university, I would tell you. I have student interviews that say negative things about the university. I'm okay with that. You know, I'm not going to sit there and try to make the university look better than it really is. I believe most universities are good. I think most places are positive, but like, I don't need to be a corporate mouthpiece for universities. They can do that right here, you know, but I just think, I just think it's, it's really shady that, you know, you've got this whole like approach of like, let's go visit a university and really see what it's really like. Is it a good university for you? Like the, the central premise of what I do when I visit universities is on display here, but instead of really getting to know these students and instead of like really telling us about the important things about the university, all we do is go through all the points that they want to highlight and we do it through a student who's clearly been told what to say and like what points they need to hit. And then, you know, we tell you, hey, check out our website where we're going to collect data on you and then sell that to people. That's what this is. Okay, my people. And this right here, this is not that. This is real info and it's for you people. And if you are still here watching this, like, because this video is going to be long. I, I have no idea how long this is going to be. But if you are still here, like... Dude, let me go big camera for a second. If you are still here, thank you so much. You are an amazing person. And I am extremely grateful that you are even aware of this channel. Like, this has been a lot of work. This project has been two years, more than two years, of, of hard sweat and labor. Okay? Like, I have put in, I don't know how many hundreds of hours editing uh, planning videos, researching for videos, filming for videos. I've had very little assistance on my end. I've been mostly doing this by myself. Um, but I wouldn't change a thing. Like, I am so happy with everything that I have done here. I know that not every one of my videos is going to be a banger. I know that this channel, especially, is going to be hard to grow because it's not like other channels. You know, other channels... Other channels, you guys, you know, you're going to be interested. Look, like if, if for my subscriptions, Five Star Matchup, I, I, I'm going to want to tune into Five Star Matchup every single year because I love the Pittsburgh Steelers, and that's never going to change. College counseling, that's something that maybe you need for a few years at best. This is, once you graduate from college, I don't expect you to keep watching my videos. You probably don't care, and that's okay. But that also means that it's like really hard for this channel to grow because it's not the kind of thing that you're going to sub to and like stick around forever. It's something that is useful for you for a period of time. Um, and that's OK. I, I, I understand that. And like all I ask is that, you know, maybe you do check out a video now and then you, you stay subbed. And like you do that because you want other people to have access to this information. If you if you want this to continue to be a resource for other people, which is what I want. You know, support the channel. Stay with it. Uh, I, I know that you might think, all right, I got into college. I don't need Scores channel anymore. Like, I get that. And I wouldn't blame you for, like, unsubbing or walking away. But, like, if you can stick around, if you can still tell other people, if you can say, hey, like, this is a really good resource and you might need this, like, tell other people, then it helps. Like, every one of you people that has subbed to this channel and has watched a single video, like, you're making it possible for other people to get the information they really need, 
All right. Not this corporate bullshit that's being peddled by Jeff Bezos. So thank you guys. Thank you so much for everything this year. Thank you so much for like all the stuff that you guys have done so far. I've just have had a blast engaging with uh, the community here. I've been having a lot of fun answering all the questions that come in, like more and more questions are popping in every day. And it's like a treat to get a chance to talk to you guys about that stuff and just learn what you're going through. And I will continue to be making great content in 2023. So thank you all for everything you have done. And I will see you next week.